I'd like to start out by thanking everyone who posted their questions. This applies to all the people who posted intelligent questions. Unlike a few of the most ridiculous questions put forth by trolls or people who did a great deal of sleeping in school. Anyway, let's get started. Have you learned any firsthand stories about Sicily during your time in the life? I do speak a lot about Sicily. And while I was in the life, I've heard certain things about the history from the Sicilians that I dealt with. Nevertheless, obviously everything I speak about was not told to me, but it did spark an interest back then. I remember reading that Bobby Manor once refused anesthesia while having a tooth removed in prison in case he became loose with his mouth. Is it conceivable that authorities would use tactics like in medical situations? As most of us know, Bobby Manor was the former consigliere for the Genovese family and is more commonly known for plotting to kill John Gotti. Supposedly, Manor refused Novocaine while having an affected tooth pulled as he feared he would have no control in remaining silent while under the influence. But to answer the question, no, I don't know of any law enforcement using truth serum methods on anyone. Did you know anyone who operated at an aqueduct racetrack? Aqueduct was in our neighborhood, and I'm sure a lot of neighborhood bookies hung around the track back then, but I personally didn't know any. Most of my time spent at the racetrack was at a very young age. Were associates taken out for violating rules, despite not being members? I assume by taken out, this person is asking if an associate was ever killed for breaking the rules. There are certain rules that obviously don't apply to associates. Throughout history, associates have been killed for various reasons, some of which involve rule breaking. And to be more specific, rules don't necessarily mean cosa nostra rules. They could be a family's rules or protocols. If the administration of a family sends word out that they don't want anybody doing A, B, or C, and they find out an associate is doing B, then he has a problem. You mentioned Mike DeSantis and the speedboat with millions of dollars of cocaine. Did he have that sort of money to buy it up front, or was it on consignment? I honestly have no idea how he paid for the drugs, or even whose loss it was when the boat and drugs were seized. But I do know that Mikey was doing very well for himself and making a lot of money back then. This next person asked several questions about the consigliere position. How many made guys or captains can a consigliere have under him? Typically, he gets one guy, and all the captains in the family are under him and the rest of the administration. Is money being kicked up regularly to the consigliere? Whenever money is being kicked up, it goes to the administration, which he's a part of. So yes, if a consigliere needs a guy for work, can he use any guy from any crew in the family? I'm unsure if this person is using the word work in the right context, meaning a hit or not. But depending on what a guy is needed for, a consigliere can use a guy for one thing or another, and he don't need to ask permission to do so. If a captain's promoted to consigliere, does his crew get a new captain or do they still report to him? If a captain becomes part of the administration, his crew will get a new captain because now he's part of the administration and he has other responsibilities. Do you see any path for the mob to become as big as it was from the 1930s to the 1980s before it crumbled under Rico? The time frame this person mentioned from the 1930s to the 80s is arguably when the mob was its strongest. And just as with most things of the past, those days are long gone. I don't see the mob doing anything that will take them back to what they've once been. Has an associate ever pretended to be a full Italian in order to be made and then was found out? Not that I know of. I'm sure throughout the years, there's been guys who lied about their background and slipped through the cracks. If a proposed member owes a substantial amount of money to a bookmaker, does he need to settle those debts before he's inducted? In most cases, if a guy owes money, whoever's putting him up will make him settle up before he gets inducted. And one of the reasons they do this is to avoid future headaches and unnecessary sit-downs. Have you ever seen or heard of a sit-down becoming heated to the point of physical violence with weapons involved? I've never witnessed nor heard of anything like that happening. The most that ever happens is after arguing, guys leave the table disgusted with one another. In a year calendar, which months are traditionally the biggest and slowest times for money making? Naturally, at the summer's end begins football season. So from September to February, guys that are involved with the sports tend to make more money. But money could be made throughout the year on various other rackets. Do veterans join the mob? There's been a lot of guys who were formerly in the military. 
And those particular guys can say they were soldiers in two armies. Although the mob is by no comparison to the men and women who served their country. And with that said, a quick shout out to all you veterans and thank you for your service. The next person believes that it's far-fetched that Joey Gallo convinced Jerome Johnson to shoot Joe Colombo and wants to know my take. On June 28, 1971, Joe Colombo was speaking at an Italian Unity Day rally in Columbus Circle. He was shot three times by a black guy named Jerome Johnson. While at the rally, Johnson posed as a reporter and carried two different types of cameras besides a gun. Following the shooting, although the police had Johnson in custody, he too was shot to death. It's believed that Colombo's bodyguard, Philip Rosillo, shot Johnson. Joe Colombo suffered brain damage and died in May 1978. The reason most people pointed the finger at Joey Gallo was the relationship he built with Nicky Barnes and other black guys while in Greenhaven prison. However, if you dig deeper into Johnson, he was a mentally unstable guy, similar to Anthony Camello, who shot Frankie Cali. My opinion is, could Johnson have been put up to shooting Colombo? Absolutely. But this is no different than Mark David Chapman shooting John Lennon. Like Camello, Chapman was a guy with mental problems carrying a gun. I think all the victims mentioned had a common denominator. They were at the wrong place at the wrong time. Sometimes not everything's a conspiracy. If you were to pick your Mafia Mount Rushmore, the four greatest mafiosa in history, who would you pick? This person offers his. Santo Traficante, Carlos Marcello, Tony Accardo, and Tommy Lucchese. To begin with, and I mean this with no disrespect, I don't play fantasy football or fantasy mafia. The guys this person mentioned were all former bosses, and naturally together would be a force to be reckoned with. In the past, when asked if I could choose to sit and have dinner with a particular person in mob history, my answer was with a non-Italian, Maya Lansky. And this was only due to his business mind. If you ask me if I had the opportunity to pick meeting somebody in history, that person would have nothing to do with the mob. But if any of the viewers want to give their mafia Mount Rushmore, feel free to do so in the comments. This last question actually came from someone who knows me, and they recently wanted to know what I thought about all the questions I'm asked. But first, let me quickly bring attention to the super thanks icon found beneath this video for anyone who'd like to show their support for videos such as this one. Every time I make this announcement, I can't help but to think of Tony Muscatel's famous words. He throws money around like manhole covers. Okay, back to the question, which I think is a good one, because I have mixed feelings. I greatly appreciate the intelligent questions, and I hope that the answers that I give are valued by the people who ask them. Then there are also the invasive questions, which obviously I don't appreciate or answer. Next, there are questions that sound like it's a prosecutor that's asking, questions that always go unanswered. And lastly, because these questions are on the bottom of the barrel, where the people who ask them live, yes, the trolls. Anytime I read one, I not only shake my head, but find myself thinking about how pathetic a life these people really must have. I've said this before. When people focus on negativity, what they don't seem to comprehend is they're inviting that same negativity into their own lives. Anytime I'm attacked, not once, not twice, not even three times, but all the time, it has the opposite effect. I'll explain. You have to think about it. There are trolls who are out there, haters, people full of jealousy, spewing pure bullshit, which for the record, I never entertain for several reasons, but paramount among them, I know the truth and I leave it at that. To put this into perspective, these same people are not only giving me free promotion, a gift I never return, but as a result of their negativity, I'm blessed in positive ways. In fact, just today, I received great news. I can't share what that entails, but I can add, it made this difficult journey all worth it. When the time comes, you'll remember me saying this today, and you'll know what I was talking about. So with that said, I want to take the time to thank all my haters for their continued support, because if not for you people, I may not have the opportunities that I am thankfully being blessed with. Grazie.